You know my son-in-law, he's from Indy here, uh, Graham Rayhall, Indy car driver. He asked me years ago about the quality of life. Like, you're just going to keep going down this road. Racing's what I love to do. And, uh, but, but I have looked at different directions in life to go. And I, I set goals, but I have a job to do also. To raise money, you know, to keep the ship afloat for over, well, over 120 employees. But the issue is, I can't get my book done. I can't get my movie done. They've been rewritten, trying to fix it, because I keep moving on. But there's going to be a point, you know what I'm saying? Um, I had a lot of people at Seattle, sponsors called me and said, we heard you say, I'm over. And I, I, I was over that moment. I didn't realize how hard it, it, it did to me mentally. And I didn't even know it until it was done. And what I'm saying is, <clears throat> there's there's a direction. If you're waiting for me here to tell you I'm quitting, I ain't going to do that. But I'm trying to figure this out, where I'm going in life, because I know Father Time is against me. <clears throat> and... And when I got that 150, like, okay, then the next week it rained and I blew the tires off. We had a clutch malfunction. And I said, well, here we are right back where we started. And then we come here to Indy, you know what I mean? And all of a sudden this car is running like cars should run. And I'm driving it like you should you should drive her. And, and, a, and a doctor, when I was in the hospital, told me, you know, in, in 07 when we lost Eric and I crashed, he told me, you're done. You ain't gonna race. You're gonna be lucky to walk. And I've never allowed anyone to ever tell me anything. And I fought to get back. And then I started hearing, "You're 70. This thing is over." You know. And you know, it's it really true. It's how bad you want it. And it don't matter if you're a race car driver or you're a, a writer or a, a Fox, you know, interview. It doesn't matter what you are in life. You do it because you love it. And when you don't do good, you do the best you can. And there's a lot of guys out here with more talent than me that just don't have a race car with the money or the right crew chief. I just happen to be one of the lucky ones. But the point I was trying to make, I lost my, I missed my window. I should have retired for that quality of life 20 years ago. And I'm not kidding. You know what I'm saying? I should have walked away. And now, I don't even know. It's pathetic, I come out here, I ache, I pain, I hurt. You know, my wife, this morning in the shower, she said, I could hear you in the bedroom and you're in pain. I said, yeah, it's getting tougher. But I owe this sport for so much. And I don't mean the money I've made, I'm, giving, I'm starting to give it back. But I mean, Eric is gone, you know, and that's heartbreaking to me. And I, I can't even imagine this family. Okay, but, but someday I gotta go out that door. And I said, two things. It should be nice to win a championship. And it should be nice to win Indy one more time. And do you think, how I believe in myself that I can win? Because I've always had that attitude. But I stood there in the pits and I said, who are you shitting? You're beat up, you're worn out. You know, Overall Industries gave me a lifetime contract as long as I want to drive. The president, Hervis, is, is 10 years older than me. And he just loves me for my energy. But man, the energy is getting tough, guys. And, and this race really meant a lot to my girls, to show my grandkids. Because when you win Andy, you can win a championship, but you win, and they're only starting on going at 200. And they're already starting out going after the championship. What I'm saying is, I don't know how to get off this train, but I got to. It's coming. And I don't know when, because every time I think now, you did this see I was walking. And I even said today, if you do it, then walk out. And I couldn't do it. I just stood down there and said, you're going to have a heart attack. You're going to die here, like I always say. And I don't mean I want to die. I want to be with my grandkids. The quality of life has passed me. The next step, I know where it goes. And and I, this ain't a very good interview, so don't write all this shit. <laughs> but I'm really glad.
lost and, and, and winning this, I didn't think I'd ever get the chance again. I didn't think I could be that good with the right team that, that supported me when I failed so much. I'm sorry. Back to you. Well, thank you very much, John. First of all, I think I can speak for everybody here. We, we appreciate what you just said and uh, you know, consider you drag racing family and what you have done for the sport unparalleled. But you stormed through a field that is the quickest field in funny car history. You went through Johnny Lindbergh, Robert Hyde, Matt Hagen, and in the final round, Jack Beckman. To win this race, you earned this race. And what John, saying is, I live for all of you. I love you. I love all the sponsors because what they allow us to do. And uh, if I beat them guys, if somebody up there that likes me better, you know, on this day, to let me beat guys that are really, I shouldn't say this, my sponsors will all quit, but I'm racing guys that are young. Beckman, this guy's the best out there on the tree, and I'm out there jerking around, trying to deep stage, trying to roll, doing everything stupid. But it's the only way I can stay up with these kids. You know, Robert Hyde, I can't beat him. He had a 50, he had a 90 light, he smoked the tires. Just, it just like somebody wanted me to win this race. And I don't know what they're keeping me around for. You understand what I was trying to tell you the other morning, Phil, and you go, no. I said, no, you don't know, Phil. You wrote my ending. I was ready to quit right there. Do you feel like you just keep doing this because this is your purpose in life? Yeah, but you know, sooner or later it's going to get you. The old pump's going to quit. You know, I, I'm back there. I'm pounding the coffee. You, if you only saw it, my doctor would come in here and have the NHRA pull my license. They just say this guy's just on a suicide deal to kill himself. And I'm not. I just love it so much. And that's what's really pathetic. I starved. I didn't know my kids. I don't know my wife anymore. I just go down this road to run out here and do this stuff. And it's the greatest sport in the world. And, and, and I don't know why I do it. I think I'm mentally, I got problems. You know, they're telling me that too in Miami. Okay? Uh, look, it, I ain't going to go anywhere. If you got a question, I'll try to answer it. Phil Burgess, NHRA National Director. Phil. Let's just talk about final round and your emotions going up there, how you saw the run. They took me over with, Fox took me over to, to film me and Perdon. And I sat there and all I talked about was Perdon. And, and the girls kind of looked at me like, well, yeah, geez, you're pretty good yourself. Can't you mention it? Because that's where I came from. I just don't belong here anymore. And that's I'm not quitting, that ain't what I'm saying, but it just ain't making no sense. And and I go out here with these kids that, that want to win so bad, and and, 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 and I'm, I'm gonna call in an hour and say, I wanna take all this back, I know. I'm just saying, I'm gonna keep going, but something ain't making no sense. You know, it just, you know, is there a plan for me? What is it? You know what I mean? Win an Indy? biggest thing on my bucket list, let me tell you, never thought I'd ever get a chance again, no matter how good I was. You know what I'm saying? It just, I can't believe it. Look, all I'm talking is bullshit, and I don't want to do that to you. When you got out of the car, the first thing you said, instead of profanity, was, <laughs> to you. I never cuss. I know, that's what I'm saying. To you on the couch, you were talking to the audience at home. You were trying to inspire someone with this moment. Who are you trying to inspire? What's that word mean? <laughs> Motivate. Uh oh. You I were talking to someone. I can't hear either. Neither can I. made me deaf. I can't see anymore. Uh, I, I was talking to people. If you knew the letters that I did. And I, I'm, I'm no preacher. I can't save or cure the sick. But I've got a letter over in my trailer right now. Four pages long. From a guy at 12, 12 years old was hitting a car wreck and and ruined for life. And, and now it's taken its toll on him. He's 35, but he come to say, you gave me a reason when I saw you in the early days about dreaming. And that's all I, and I'm gonna call him tonight. Uh, you know, 
He's got three kids, but he says he's starting to lose his memory now. And I get it. And if it don't just happen at your age, hit my head, this is why I'm losing it. But the point I'm saying is, is I yelled out. I was almost mad. I just yelled out at the camera. You people out there, get off that couch. You know, look at the goofy stuff going on. And they, they wanted to put me 40 years ago on medication for depression. I fight it every day. And I ain't supposed to tell people, sure, they say, we just signed this fool, it's nuts. But I have it really bad. And I gotta get up and get to the coffee machine, or I gotta get on a treadmill. And if I don't, I carry it. And I gotta get rid of it. And so what I'm saying is, the doctor said, we can give you something to fix it. And I said, not with the machine I have to run. I have to make decisions that are right. And, and, and when you get all happy, hell, I need another race team. You, you know what I mean? Because you're nuts. And I've been to the Miami Medic in the Miami Head Center. We've had some talks. And um, what I'm saying is, I don't know what's going on. This was a big moment for me. But I tell people out there, if someone tells you to get on a couch, well, get your, and I didn't cuss, but I said, get off that couch. Don't let anybody tell you you're too old. Get grandpa, grandma, get out, walk, stay alive, keep moving. And that is the world. Because you, you can all be young, but it's going to come one day. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, Austin, Austin Coyle called me and said, Clint Eastwood said it. How do you do it at 90? He said, you don't let the old man in. The old man's already in. He done snuck in on me. I'm trying to get rid of him. I fight him every day. But it's a bitch. Was this a medical <laughs> survey? What, what, I really screwed this up. I don't think he did. Does anybody else have a question for John? John, we, are, we understand. Yes, Kevin McKenna, National Dragster. Your thoughts on having the whole family, including Courtney, here for the first time this year? I didn't have Ashley or Adrian here. Uh, the, the boys started school. Autumn was here. Um, yeah, they're my whole life. I'm just having an emotional day because I went in to see what you can do to me. And Jack Beckman, if he had taken his helmet off, I would have kissed him on the lips. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I really love these people. I almost feel bad. Like, what's an old piece of shit like me able to beat these guys, no matter how good my car is? And that is the truth. And that is the truth. And, and I go down this road. And it's it's going to get ugly. I'm going to go till I drop. And my doctor said, oh, without a doubt, you're that stupid. I, he said, you're just going to go. And he says, I watch you. And I go, I don't understand it. I'm tired. I, I go to bed. I sleep eight, nine, ten hours. I get up. And, 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 and I'm just tired the next day. And anything I want my heart, nope. You're, you look, I know, Sarah, I'm in trouble. Okay. But he said, he said to me, he said, how long you felt this way, tired? I told him, 20 years. And that's the truth. I've been waking up tired since I turned 50. 55, 60, because I run seven days a week. But if I stop, I'll die. And that's what I'm really afraid of. But it's some grandchildren that I really want to be with and my children. Uh, you know, uh, Ram was right. I missed my window. Uh, so I guess I got to die with all of you. So, but I tr trust me, I'm going before all of you. So I just want to tell you I love you. You can throw all this shit out. You don't have to write it. It's all bullshit. But what I do really love NHRA. I love Mel Yellow, the guys down there standing there trying to trying to put it out. You know, the, the bottles they got a job to do. I'm sorry. You're great. You are great, right. ladies and gentlemen. Any other questions? We're gonna let them go. I'll just John, go. thank you very much. Born Indy for the fifth time. Did you win it? Yes! You won it for the fifth time. <laughs>